Hi everybody, welcome back to our 11.5 notes. Uh, we kind of ended in the middle of a problem last video, so we're going to pick up right where we left off. So where we left off is that we have a pool, we are putting grass in a uniform strip around the pool, and we have enough grass seed to cover 700 square feet. Okay. The pool's dimensions are 40 feet by 20 feet. So if we're adding a uniform width to each side, uh, that uniform width I've decided is just going to be X because we don't know what it is yet, so I assigned a variable to it. The new uh, width would be 40 plus 2X, and the new length would be 20 plus 2X. So where we were le leaving off is the area of that grass area uh, should equal the outside rectangle, that total area, minus the area of the inner rectangle or the, the area of the pool because we're not going to put grass seed inside of the pool. So the area for uh, the grass that we ha have is 700 square feet, and then we're ready to finish our equation, okay? So the outside area, you would still do length times width. So we're going to do 20 plus 2x times our width, which is 40 plus 2x. Then I'm going to subtract out the pool. So the pool is 40 by 20, and 40 times 20, uh, the pool has an area of 800 square feet. So that's our starting equation. And from there, it's just normal problem solving and <laughs> equation solving. Uh, so, uh, you would distribute first, uh, 20 times 40 is 800, 20 times 2x would be 40x, 2x times 40 is 80x, and 2x times 2x would be 4x squared. We still have a minus 800 on the right side and a 700 on the left side. Simplifying from here, 800 minus 800 cancels out. Uh, we'll have a 4x squared, and then we have some like terms, 40x plus 80x is 120x, and this is going to equal 700. Okay. At this point, I know I have a quadratic, uh, because I have an x squared there. And that means that I should get everything on one side um, so that it's in standard form so I can solve it. So if I subtract 700 from both sides, I'll have 0 equals 4x squared plus 120x minus 700. And then from here, I notice that every single thing is divisible by 4, which is really nice, uh, which makes my life a whole lot easier for solving. So I can divide both sides of an equation by the same thing. I can divide both sides by 4. 0 divided by 4 is 0. 4x squared divided by 4 is x squared. 120 divided by 4 is 30. So that would be 30x as our middle term. And 700 divided by 4 is 175. And then it actually does factor pretty nicely. Uh, if you would like to use the quadratic formula or completing the square, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, but once you solve it, uh, let's see, I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to show you guys what the answer is. I believe in your ability to solve quadratics at this point, or at least I hope so. Um, you're going to get that x is either equal to negative 35 or x is equal to 5. And then we look at our context of our problem. Does negative 35 make sense? No, because you can't have a negative width. Um, that would be going like into the pool or something. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, a positive 5 does make sense uh, because it is positive. Uh, so that's our width, is 5. Uh, putting that into the context of our problem, that 5 is the length of our width. How wide would the, street, the strip be? It would be 5 feet wide. Okay. Let's do another area problem. The next one says a rectangular piece of metal is 10 inches longer than it is wide. Okay, so I have a nice rectangle here. So let's say this is the length and this is the width. Uh, so if the 
length is 10 inches longer than it is wide, that means that my length would equal 10 plus w. Then the next sentence says that squares with sides 2 inches long are going to be cut from the corners. So I'm going to make little squares in my corners that I'm going to cut out. And they are, and the side lengths are two inches in every direction. Okay. So there's two inches in each direction because they are squares. Okay. So after we cut out those squares, the flaps are folded upward to form an open box. So what's going to happen is they're going to cut out these squares and then kind of this middle portion is going to get folded up, folded up, folded up, and folded up. So all four of those are going to get folded up. Okay, and we're going to form an open box that way. The volume of the box, once we've folded it up, is 918 cubic inches. Okay, what were the original dimensions of the piece of metal? Okay. So let's see, to find volume, volume of a box is length times width times height, right? So let's figure out what our length, width, and height are going to be for our new box once we've folded everything, okay? So for our new box that we're making after we've cut out the squares and folded the sides up, my new length, well, it was 10 plus W. But then I took away 2 inches on the right side and 2 inches on the left side. So I'm going to have that 10 plus W, and I'm going to subtract 2 and subtract 2, so really I'm subtracting 4. And so that would simplify to be 6 plus W. Okay. Uh, for the width of my new box, it was just W, but now I'm taking away 2 from the top here and two from the bottom there. So I'm going to take my width and I'm going to subtract four inches from it. And that's going to be the width for my box. The height is how tall my box is going to be. And if I cut out two inch squares and I fold these flaps up, the flaps are going to be two inches high. Okay. So with all of that information, let's put that into our volume equation. So I know that the volume of our box is 918. The length uh, for the box, once it's all folded, is 6 plus W. The width of our box, once I folded it all up, is W minus 4. And the height of our box is 2 inches. Okay. And then it's just regular solving from here. Okay, so if you distribute everything out, uh, what you're really doing is you're doing 6 times w, which would be 6w, times 2 would be 12w. You'll do 6 times negative 4, which is negative 24, times 2, which would be negative 48. You'll do w times w, which is w squared times 2, which would be 2w squared. And you'll do w times negative 4, which is negative 4w, times 2, which would be negative 8w. And this equals 918. Let's combine like terms over here. And I know it's going to be a quadratic, because I have a w squared. So let's go ahead and subtract 918 at the same time. So I'll subtract 918 from both sides to get it in standard form. So I'll have a 2w squared. I'm going to have 12w minus 8w, which would be 4w. I'll have negative 48 minus 918, which is negative 966. And everything is divisible by 2, which has been happening a lot for us today, but it's all good. Um, let's make our life easy. Divide everything by 2, and you're going to get w squared plus 2w minus 483 equals 0. And if you're wondering, it does factor nicely. 
or you're also welcome to use any of our other methods for solving quadratics. Uh, once you solve it from here, uh, you're going to get w equals negative 23 or w equals 21. Uh, a width of negative 23 does not make sense, but a width of 21 inches does. Okay, so that would be our original width. So our original width then would be 21 inches. And our original length is 10 more than w. So our original length, before we cut everything out and folded it up, would be 10 plus 21, which would be 31 inches. So there's our answer. Okay. Last one is a projection problem. A ball is projected upward from the ground. Its distance in feet from the ground at t seconds is s of t, so that would be our distance, equals negative 16 times t squared, so that's time squared, plus 64 times t. And again, t is time. But that's our main equation that we're going to be using. Our first question says, what at what times will the ball be 32 feet from the ground? Okay. Well, if it's 32 feet from the ground, that's a distance. So it's saying that s of t is 32 at what times? So what we're solving for is t. Okay. So let's go ahead and use our equation to solve this. So if s of t is 32, we can plug that in here. So we'll have 32 equals negative 16 t squared plus 64 t. And I'll leave the t's as t's because I don't know what it is yet, and that's what I'm solving for. Uh, to solve for t, it is a quadratic, which means I want everything on the same side. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 32 from both sides. I'll have negative 16 t squared plus 64 t minus 32 equals 0. Everything is actually divisible by 16, so let's make our life easier. And personally, I like having positive leading coefficients, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 16. So that'll give us 0 equals t squared minus 4t uh, plus 2. This one does not factor, sorry. Um, so we'll have to use the quadratic formula for this one. And for the sake of time, I'm going to show you how it ends up, okay? What you're going to get in the quadratic formula is 4 plus or minus the square root of 8 all over 2, which simplifies to 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 2 over 2, uh, which is 4 plus or minus the square root of 2. Okay, So that's your exact answer is 2 plus the square root of 2 and 2 minus the square root of 2. Uh, if you want approximate answers, uh, this is approximately at 3.4 seconds and 0 0.6 seconds. Okay, So there's our exact answer, and there's an approximate answer. Okay, The second part of the problem says, how about at 48 feet? So I'm again going to let you guys try one. Alright, so if the distance is 48 feet, see if you can solve for time. Okay, I'm going to let you guys have a minute, pause the video, and I will give you your answer in 3, 2, one. After all of that, uh, you should have your equation set up as 48 equals negative 16t squared plus 64t. And once you solve it, you're going to get t is either 3 seconds or t is at 1 second. That's it. Okay. Now in case you're curious, I've got like a minute left. What's happening is your projectile is coming up and coming back down. Um, and so to be at a specific height, it happens at two different places in time, once on its way up and once on its way down. So that's why you're getting two answers, and they're both perfectly good and wonderful answers. So hopefully this helps you all. Uh, good luck with all of your word problems this week. Remember to draw pictures. Uh, remember to solve your equations. Remember to go back to the original problem and make sure that you answered all parts of all of the questions. Okay, good luck this week.